keeping stuff from ending up at Goodwill in a very indirect way here. <laughs> I know a lot of people are gonna hate this video. I don't really care. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. Welcome to the Commonwealth Cabin. I've got a great topic today. I think it's awesome. It's about Goodwill and all you thrifters out there know that they've kind of changed their strategies and tactics over the years. And I got a message from somebody the other day that says they are turning the table on Goodwill. And it got me thinking because I get these messages often and I wanted to talk about this topic. I find it very intriguing. So as many of you know, I used to be far more of a thrifter and it, around here that means Goodwill, although there is one new one that's not Goodwill at this point, which is kind of cool. And I used to go there on the way home from school like almost every single day and used to do pretty darn good and things have changed drastically around here, unfortunately, but that's really not the point of this. The point of this is how we react to it as resellers and it's different for different folks in different parts of the country for sure. And some folks, of course, depending on where you live in the country, there's still a lot of good thrifting going on. And even around here, you can still find stuff now and then, but it's nowhere near like it used to be. I want to describe that when I talk about this today. Monopoly Goonies. This is not something I normally pick up, but I just love the Goonies. So I'm like, Ugh, how do I buy this thing? I'm trying to justify it. I'm like, I'll give it to Turner and whatever. But, you know, he doesn't play board games all that much. He might play it once or something. She had $5 on it. I'm figuring this is probably $15 to $20 item. And I offered three. I'll take it for three bucks and sold it for $16.95 plus shipping. So a lot of people often comment like I do on this show. I've done it multiple times just saying, hey, you know, the good old days of going to Goodwill and finding a cart full of stuff for me are over. It just doesn't happen very often. And especially here in this little one. Matter of fact, what's happened over the last five years is a complete contraction in multiple ways. So the store itself is half the size that it used to be. And I find that hard to believe that the reason might be the, the lack of donations. I don't think that's it at all because the donation part of it is bigger than it used to be. The sales part of it is smaller than it used to be. Now, that's different than a lot of folks. They might say, well, my Goodwill is gigantic now. And that's what's happened in the big towns, the big cities, not the big towns, but the cities around here, there's massive, there's a huge Goodwill in Lynchburg, just massive. And I think what's been going on because the outlying Goodwills, two of them that I know of that I used to go to often have shrunk in size. They need to keep those open for the donations. They don't really care about the selling of it. And so when you go in there now, you know, it was kind of a progression. It started with, you know, the prices were going up, but I was still finding great stuff and a lot of it. And then the next step was the contraction of the store and then the availability of good items went way down. The prices still stayed up and the availability of good items just weren't there. And occasionally those items, you would see them pop up, but the prices were really high. There wasn't much meat on the bone. Now, don't get me wrong. I can still go down there and I can make a little bit of money every once in a while, get lucky and make, you know, a $40 profit on an item. But it is nowhere near like it used to be. There's no doubt about that. And I've gone to the local ones here, the bigger stores, and I've found some stuff, but again, not on that level. I think I know what's been going on. We've all talked about it for quite some time. Some people still comment, my Goodwill is amazing. And there's different parts of the country I hear those comments from. There's no doubt that there are some areas that are still really, really good. They have different systems depending on which Goodwill little universe you're in. And of course, there's the bin stores that everybody talks about. I pulled up Kristen's channel here, A Rural Squirrel. She travels around going to the bins. And a lot of people still say there's still a ton of stuff to find at the Goodwill bins. And they're selling it off at a weight, essentially. And I, I don't think a lot of people quite understand how some of this stuff goes. When that stuff doesn't get sold, they still sell off the rest of it in massive quantities and massive weights off to other countries or different different outlets and they'll sell it off at a cheaper and cheaper amount until they get down to the nitty-gritty of what nobody wants and so they've implemented that strategy throughout the whole process from their local stores to their hubs to their big stores to their online operations to their own auction sites as well as to these bins so there's this whole process and by the way i don't begrudge goodwill they can do whatever they want it's it's you know none of my business i get to comment on it 
But I've started to hear some comments that I've often thought about in the past that aren't just, you know, I can't go to my Goodwill anymore. There's just, I don't waste my time anymore, right? And I hear those people saying that. But I've heard a couple lately that I'm surprised it's taken this long for people to start thinking about it in this way. And I've mentioned this stuff before, but they're like, hey, it's time to turn the tables on the Goodwill. I've outsmarted them. This is what I'm doing now. I have run out of book space in there, so I started putting some in here because I've been buying a bunch lately. And this was a, oh man, this was good. This, 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 and this we paid $81 for. And those were some pretty good sets. And I got it at, I guess it was an estate sale, if you want to call it that, slash garage sale. And these right there have already put us in the pure profit. They sold for $99.95 plus shipping. You know, I hear people say I'm not donating to the Goodwill anymore because of, you know, whatever. They don't like their practices or whatever. And that's fine. It's all everybody's own business. They can do what they want. And for us, we stopped doing that quite a long time ago. The Really, the only reason I ever do, and this is true for a lot of people, donate to the goodwill as opposed to some other charity or some other thrift store or some other anything is that it's convenient to do and i don't think people are wedded to the idea of oh i have to give to the goodwill because they're so amazing and their charities that they do and that's not to discount what they do for some folks out there you know and i'm sure they've done wonderful things for some folks but all in all for me and for a lot of people who know what goes on we would much prefer to donate to some other charity. There's all kinds of stuff local around here from the Humane Society who has sales to there's two missions here. There's one in Lynchburg. We talked about Andrea at the Blessing Place, and she's absolutely amazing. They do amazing work, and there's different places we would rather donate to. But I really think that Goodwill underestimates the, uh, the thought process that people want to donate to them because it's them. I just don't think that's out there. And this is what got this person in it. And I've thought about this for years. Matter of fact, I've kind of done this before. And I'm going to talk about that. Trying to get around, get those things before they get to the Goodwill. In some respects, we already do that, right? At garage sales. Because a lot of that stuff, if it doesn't get sold, that's where it ends up going. So how do you access stuff before it ends up in the hands of Goodwill and bypass the system altogether? Because let's face it, that's what they're doing, essentially. They're cutting us. We used to be the middleman out. And to some degree, they're cutting us out. And like I said, perfectly their priority. Black Rifle Company mugs, Coffee Company mugs. There are three of them sold for $61, $62.85 plus shipping. I was at a yard sale this past weekend, actually, and it was on the side of the road. They're like, hey, we're moving, we're whatever, and start asking prices, and the prices are like eBay value. I'm like, holy moly, you know, you're, what are you going to do? I didn't say this out loud, but I'm thinking, man, you're going to be taking a lot of stuff. There was one right down the road for me. And they're moving in two weeks. And I'm like, what in the world? Why, why, are the pri whoop. <laughs> why are the prices so tack on high if you're moving? Unless they're going to take it with them. And I went back later in the day to both of these sales. And both times, their prices went way, way down underneath where they originally started. Because they realized nobody was buying anything. And that was the case the first time. we There was tons of... I don't know if they're all pickers. You know, I think we overestimate how many people out there are actually pickers at these yard sales. We tend to think everybody is, you know, reselling on eBay, but that just isn't the case. I don't know what percentage it is. I suppose it varies. But there was two or three people I knew as eBay resellers that were there. And we just went right past tons of great stuff. Prices were all too high. And we asked the prices, you know, and it was too high. And we just moved on to the next person who had better prices and we sold a ton of stuff. I have no doubt that that affected that person. And then their prices came down. But I still have no doubt that both of these places ended up donating a good portion of what they had. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. They were moving. They needed to get rid of this stuff. They don't want to bring it back in the house. Probably ended up donating it to Goodwill because around here there aren't many options unless you seek them out. This is really the point I want to make. There's actually two or three examples of just bypassing Goodwill. This isn't quite one of those, but... I have been making contacts with, with people and telling them explicitly, hey, here's my information. Contact me if you ever have anything you want to get rid of before you donate it, for instance. And I didn't say that to this particular company because it was a business, but they did contact me. And I bought these for $5 a piece and I sold them for $62.35. So $15 into $62.35, definitely worth it. 
but there's more specific things and I'm going to tell you about these. But let me pull one more item really quick. Here it is. It was in the bottom of this bin. I had a feeling it would be because it is a 30% off sale, which means it's been here for quite a while. And I remember the sale I got it from. So this Minecraft backpack sold after it was on 30% for like just under $14 plus shipping. And this one was actually a viewer sale, went to Jason. Jason, I enjoy your videos and have learned a lot. I transitioned my business into electronics and giving devices a second chance and new purpose. I'll always find a way to reuse or resell before properly recycling, but ultimately all devices will soon become new ones for us to enjoy. I'd be happy to buy any electronics that might be part of your death pile or something you may have upgraded from. Keep up the great work. Look, see, there's a sourcing technique right there, right? And you know what? We've got shopcommons.net. I didn't mean to mention that at this point, but I'll just say this. There are some electronics that I think I'm going to lot up and sell off over there. Not many, because I usually am pretty picky at what I take, but I do have some, and I probably will make a lot for over there soon, Jason, and you can check that out, and maybe you can strike a deal with me. I had to put a hat on. Some people are complaining I'm not wearing a hat enough lately. So here, I'll, I just, I'll try to vary it up. <laughs> so I remember talking many moons ago on a, on a video on this channel about a yard sale. And it was the end of the day and they were literally packing stuff up. And I asked them, I was like, what are y'all doing with this? I got them taking it to the Goodwill. I'm like, would you mind if I helped you pack up and you just put it in my truck and I'll choose what I want, pick what I want, and then I'll take the rest of the Goodwill. And they're like, sure, that's fine. Save me the trip. <laughs> and of course, a lot of people didn't like that back then. I don't know what, what the problem is with it, I suppose. I mean, cutting in on eBay. I mean, let's face it. Goodwill is cutting us out on purpose, which is perfectly their right. But in some cases, that's what they're doing. They're going direct to the end buyer to get more money. There's a lot of cost involved in that, by the way especially when you're paying employees. So I'm not sure it's the best decision for them in all cases, but they think it is, and that's all that matters. So this person and things I'm going to talk about, how do you cut eBay out of the loop? And here was one way right there. I was able to pick through all that stuff. I only got one good garbage bag full of good vintage clothing and probably took five to the Goodwill. But, you know, it was better than nothing, and I got it for free. So I've seen folks lately who've talked about and even done where they have a little card made up, and they go to these yard sales, and they hand out their card, and they're like, hey, at the end of the day, give me a call. I'll come by and get everything for you. And I don't know if I'd want to do that. There's a lot of work involved because a picked-over yard sale can't have that much stuff left over worth selling. But, hey, it's free. And you know what? Necessity is the mother of invention. If you want to continue to resell and you're in an area where you used to thrift and you can't anymore, you know, you do what you got to do. An Anco hat made in the USA. It's a wool model in poor condition. But I still listed it. And I got an offer for $14 on Mercari, which means there's no fees. So I took it. Plus shipping, of course. And, you know, a lot of folks are using cross-listing. We're still using List Perfectly. And I just want to give them a little shout out. There is a link down below. We use it sparingly at this point because our model has changed, but we're still getting sales on certain items that we're choosing to put on multiple flat platforms. I've seen one person who's far more bold than that around here. They're driving around with a car that has one of those magnetic decals and they're saying, hey, we'll buy all your garage sale stuff. Don't even have a garage sale. And so they're, they're trying to cut out the middleman. You know, I don't begrudge anybody any of these things, that's something that is, hey, if thrift stores continue to go in this direction so that really, let's just face it, y'all, a lot of what Goodwill is doing is collecting stuff at these locations and they don't even care that much about the sales. I mean, I went into that Goodwill down, down the road and it was just, I mean, it was terrible. A lot of my old favorite sections of the store, they don't even put them out anymore. They used to have massive cassettes and DVDs and VHS, which I like to dig through. And it's this tiny little thing in the corner and a whole wall full of dollar, dollar store stuff. I'm like, what in the world is going on here? And of course, all the retail price stuff that they're, I don't know what the heck they're doing. They're getting it all donated so somebody else can do a tax write-off, I suppose. But the donation section of the store is busy as all get out. They're, where's all the stuff going, right? I think we know where it's all going. And like I said, it's perfectly their own right. But now that resellers are trying to do this, they're coming up with interesting ideas. And I think I've mentioned both of those. And in reality, there's some more that I'm going to talk about. 
But I used to do this. I used to run a baseball program at the high school I worked at. And for a couple of years, I wanted we wanted to build a nice hitting area. And for a couple of years, we had a massive garage sale and just asked all the parents to, to gather up stuff and bring it in. We'd have a huge yard sale. And we wanted it all gone because I didn't want to deal with everything. So the prices were really, really good at that sale. And yes, I did pick a few things, but I paid for them and I paid a good price for them far more than I would at a normal yard sale because I wanted to resell them. But there was so much stuff that came in that a, if I was a picker going to that sale, making negotiations and stuff, there was tons of stuff because people were bringing it in for the express reason of, of reason of donating it because the cause was good. And that was what really drove the, the, the good sales because they were good items at the sale. And we raised, a, oh man, probably four grand over two yard sales, which brought us a long way towards putting in the new batting cage. And so people will be incentivized to donate to certain things, church sales for missions, trips, and all those things. And they would give more and they would go out of their way to give to them and forego the convenience of dropping it off at the Goodwill. And so there's a few strategies surrounding that that I think are important, but I'm going to skip that and go to a different one for a second and come back to those. And look at that. All those Funko Pops that people told me not to buy that we did so good on because we picked the right ones. We didn't buy the whole table. Although I could have bought the whole table too because we could have sold them live. We still have that one left. And I gave one of them as a gift for Turner. I'm saving one as a gift for Christmas for Turner. But everything else is sold and we've made decent money. So Trader Grimm sold and then we have those two to go and we paid two dollars for these and some of these are really good money but this one wasn't we ended up taking an offer on it fourteen dollars and twenty cents for trader grim plus shipping pay two dollars still a decent profit here's an interesting story keeping stuff from ending up at goodwill in a very indirect way here <laughs> i know a lot of people are going to hate this video i don't really care I'm a reseller, I love reselling, and I wanna find a way to make it continue on for a long time. I think garage sales are going to continue on and still be a good place to find good products for a long time, but I do think that there is a little bit of a decline. I've heard that a lot lately. I haven't really experienced it. Maybe just a shade. I think the biggest part of it is just the prices keep ticking up at those yard sales. A lot of people like to blame us YouTubers, and I like to blame technology. Google Lens, for instance, and I know that that's a much bigger factor, but that's another side point. We can argue about that in the comments. So I'm going to not mention this person because he used to create videos. And I don't know if he ever wants to again, but he told me a story of, or somebody else told me a story about him doing it, where he in his community tried to create, or didn't try to, he did, tried to have a massive community sale. He wasn't even selling at it. He just wanted everybody in his community right where he lived to sell at a garage sale. And he pumped this thing up and got everybody involved. And then he went around and picked all the stuff. <laughs> That's not a bad idea right there. And of course, you know, how many of those people wouldn't have had a garage sale if their community that had never had one didn't organize this, right? It incentivized them to have that sale. So there's one kind of obscure way that you could do it. Maybe you could get your own community, your own street to have a sale and pick their stuff. The most interesting ones I think are coming up here. Smokey the Bear sold this over on dibdit.com. A little bit less than eBay value for sure. That one is cool. And it even has prevent forest fires. You know, all you folks out in California are struggling with those lately. On the back, I love that Smokey right there. And the Noid with an extra Noid right here. And these sold for $30 plus shipping. You know, speaking of Dibdit and speaking of that sale that I went to that was, I don't know what they had on this, like 4 or $5 or something. And at the end of the day, they were willing to take a buck for it. And it's this little Sanrio, I don't know, little case of some sort. I haven't even looked it up, but I'm going to put that over there on deal of the day on Dibdit and see if somebody wants that little case right there it says it lights up i'll have to check it may not be tested but i'll put it over there for a super deal if anybody wants it speaking of the school that i used to work at there was a student group that would have they had like a sister school in africa mercy care i think is what it was called and they would have they had two giant donation bins in different places one at the school and one a little bit closer to the community where most of the kids came from and they would have these donation bins and people would donate all year in those donation bins. They would collect it, store it away in what used to be the English department room. 
and it was just full of stuff and they would have a garage sale once a year once a year and make a bunch of money for their charity and i know people would much rather give to that and their kids and their student groups and whatever the charities were then take it to the Goodwill because they knew what it was going for and they knew what it was going to. Like I said, I don't think people are wedded to the idea of giving to the Goodwill. It's the convenience of it. So how can you create systems? Now, I'm not saying, you know, you make some fake charity or something. That's not what I'm saying. But in this case, they were able to do that. They sold it at a garage sale. But hypothetically, they could take those donations and contract with me if they wanted to and say, hey, Will you and they kind of did this, by the way. They did it at the end of the sale, and sometimes before the sale, the lady who ran it, she would come to me and she says, look, somebody donated this, but I think we can get far more online. Will you take it and sell it and give us a percentage of it? And a lot of times I would. Sometimes I wouldn't. But a lot of times I would because I know I could give them more money and pocket a little bit of money, and it was, you know, I wasn't trying to be greedy and take a bunch of money from this charity. So I'd take a cut for my labor and give them the lion's share of it. I didn't do it too much because a lot of times that kind of hampers you. But there are a lot of industries out there who could be doing this and could be working with resellers in order to do this. Sold another one, yet another one of these. $17.95 plus shipping. That one keeps giving. You know, I have been contacted around here by people who do who do charity work but they don't do it and they don't have a building they don't have anything and they take donations from people and one of them you saw i think i cut a lot of it out of a of a commonwealth picker video lately but they were she was asking me she's like hey we have so much stuff that i can't turn it over her husband did ebay and she did sales yard sales sold an antique booth she's like, i just can't turn it over but i don't want to give away that money without getting something back in order to you know fund this charity that she does that she does and it was an interesting charity for sure i can't go into detail i'd take forever but she was super nice i see her out there at sales all the time and i was like well you know i'll be happy to come by and look but i like to buy i don't want to consign and give you a decent amount and she's got some money for her charity and then i make the profit off the stuff this stuff is just, it's not just starting, but this is the kind of thing that people are starting to think about when their traditional sources start to dry up because you do have those reselling skills and even those picking skills that any employee at Goodwill doesn't have. You know, it's their phone that helps them out, I suppose. So this little $81 investment into all these has paid off pretty quick. We're already in a pure profit, just a little bit. And then we sold these, which is gonna be pure profit after all the fees and all that stuff. There are some Liberty Bible commentaries in pretty darn good shape. And they sell individually. I decided to put them all together, get them sold. And this one sold for $49.95 plus shipping. So $150 already plus shipping. Still have another lot to go that was better than this one. And then a lot of tin that's even better than that. A lot of folks have now realized, hey, get in with different people where you can benefit off of them and they can benefit off of you like for instance the real estate market's been insane and so there's a huge opportunity cost whether it's for a bank who's foreclosed on something or whether it's for a company that buys out buildings buys out homes buys out apartments needs stuff gone from people who have been you know whatever they a lot of people just leave and leave all their stuff or people have passed on in a rental property or something and they got to get another tenant in there quick or get that thing sold quick so they just hire these companies that come in and clean everything out and dump it literally in the dump or take it to the goodwill or do whatever and those companies now have realized hey maybe we shouldn't throw all this stuff out and they've subcontracted even further with somebody who's agreed to come in and do the initial clean out not repair nothing like that for free so that they can pick all this stuff and then the rest of it goes to the dump, for instance. So there's all kinds of different ways to keep stuff from, from hitting the Goodwill floors to begin with that people are now tapping into as, for some people, the thrifting has really dried up in some areas. I have not been selling a whole ton of these lately because we are so down to nothing left on the Animan, the original Animan. But there are auctions going on over there from time to time, and so you'll still see me... So one, this one went to Keeley's Corner, Paul and Lynn. So thank you guys very, very much for buying the Inaman. Over 5,000 people have these sitting somewhere on their shelves in their eBay business somewhere. So we appreciate it, and I hope it gets things moving for you.
Another one of these small ones sold, $9.95 plus shipping. In all honesty, it was part of what led me to finally decide to do shopcommons.net and it is a work in progress. I'll talk about it at the end of the video. I don't want to bore you with it, but it's knowing all this stuff and hearing people say, hey, my Goodwill is no longer an option for me or a very little option. You know, it's not, you're not going to go in there. You could go to four of them and find like $40, $50 in profit some days. It's like, I'm not sure it's worth it. That's not the case for everybody. I understand that. But that kind of thing is what got me thinking about this because I don't want a job, right? I don't want to work with one of these companies. It's like a job. I don't want to deal with 80% of the merchandise is just not sellable. I'd rather pick at garage sales. So if I don't have to get a job. I don't want a job. But I've started to connect with those people who do do those things. And I don't even want to buy all that stuff off of them, to be honest with you which is why I created this marketplace for people to turn stuff over quickly. It's not quite where I want it to be. It's selling like crazy, way better than I thought, considering the type of things that are on there. There's really good deals, but they go quickly. And then there's a lot of stuff that has to find the right kind of person that's selling in the right marketplace. Not long ago, you probably saw me buy a ton of cassette tapes and I was pretty particular. There were boxes and boxes of cassette tapes and I pulled like, 19 20 of them out and they were a dollar a piece so i had to find ones that were going to be you know ten dollars into say 15 plus shipping this was one of them marilyn manson smells like children <laughs> she's never listened to it and that one sold for 19 dollars and 95 cents plus shipping and let's face it none of this stuff is particularly new but some people are starting to figure out different ways to kind of tap into that market for sourcing and I mean, I've heard stories from people at a state sale company. They're like, I went to work for an estate sale company because I knew I'd get the first choice of the stuff. You know, I might have to pay up for it or do whatever, but I had the first look at it. And some folks are doing that. Some folks have been doing that for years and years and years. There's some folks who work with estate sale companies to buy everything that's left. And, you know, they got to pay too because those estate sale companies sometimes, depending on where you're at and which company, they purposely charge way more. Because then they buy it out at the end, make a profit here, put some over here, make a profit. There's all kinds of shady business going on, but, you know, I'll leave it at that. And then there's some folks who make those connections with different antique booth sellers, right? There's, I'll tell you what, and flea market sellers, you know what I'm talking about. It's a totally different model, but a lot of times when people come in selling at a flea market, they'll bring in their garage sale stuff, right? They're not regular flea marketers. And they pull up and all the people who sell at that flea market, they go there and they buy all the stuff out before the lights even come on. You know, the sun hasn't even got up yet where most people who are coming to the flea market to buy, a lot of those things you're buying from those flea market vendors actually came in before and it's the second time they've been sold that day. Speaking of commons earlier, I did sell a lot of comic books. There were 105 of these comic books, sold them for $35 plus shipping, not a huge margin in it for me compared to what I paid for it, but there is a margin and they're out of the way and I can focus on what I wanna focus on. You know, I was gonna pick the next item, but it I just dawned on me a couple of things. One of them had to do with commons and we decided to run a little experiment. My daughter had cleaned out her bedroom and had a ton of girls clothes, right? That she's too too big for now. And of course we were gonna, you know, we give to different different places. We don't do Goodwill, but we give to different places. And I thought, you know what, let's run a little experiment with these because they're all the same size. I thought, huh, let's put all these over on commons. It may not be a reseller who's buying them, but let's put them all over there as all the same size and see if somebody wants to buy them for themselves. And that's cutting out that thrift store. If I can get some money and pass it on to the end buyer or somebody might buy it, I suppose, and piece it out. But that's not the kind of thing I like to sell. Sold a pretty cool little Viper Fruit of the Loom Made in the USA single stitch t-shirt with a pretty cool back hit right there. That sold pretty quickly, $15 plus shipping. And that was probably an 80s tee right there, which reminded me of something. We did an 80stees.com t-shirt giveaway the other day, and there's a little bit of confusion. So if you won that, you would see a reply to your comment in that video. And at that point... I'll probably tell you to email me or give you the contact information of who to contact so that they can get your shirt in your size sent to you. On the very next video 
We're going to give away another t-shirt from 80stees.com. Yes, there is a discount code Commonwealth 35% off. There should be a link below somewhere in the description as well. Back to the back to the homeschooling bin again. Two more sold. $29.90. Plus shipping. So as a practical matter for those of us resellers out there who don't want to do any of these types of things I'm talking about, you don't have time, you don't want to, it's uncomfortable, whatever. I'll just remind you, I get lots of messages from people all the time who say, you know, I don't buy any boxes. I don't buy any American Bubble Boy bubble wrap or anything like that. Link below. <laughs> They get it all for free because they ask people. They tell people what they do in their resellers and around the holidays and shoot, all year round now, they save those things for them and give them to them at work. I used to have a, a janitor would bring me boxes. He would I would tell him where to sit them right by the door that I exited every day and I'd pick those boxes up and bubble wrap and all that stuff on my way to the car. But some of us are a little too ashamed to ask for, hey, if you're donating anything, would you mind if I looked at it first or whatever? If you do that and you ask people that, you will get those people who will do that for you because they're not wedded to goodwill. If you tell them I'll come to your house and pick it up, they'll be like, shoot, heck yeah, I'll take it. Some people will say no, but are you too ashamed to ask for that? I don't know. A lot of people aren't, and that is one way to source as well. I have two people who do that for us, and plus my parents who often do it as well because they know I resell stuff. So that's one practical way you can bypass those items getting to Goodwill in the beginning. Got a few more sales, but I wanted to give a, a thank you to Fletch Flips, Tim and Lisa Fletcher. Thank you very, very much. We have your sticker right here, and I am going to put it up back there on the wall. Boy, if there ever was a regret at a yard sale, it was this. I've had to discount it over and over and over again. Now, fortunately, this thing rolls up pretty good and is not as hard to ship as it might look. But I, when I bought it, I thought I'd get like $75 and I did not. I got like $35 for it plus shipping. And another one sold. This one is a year four course book. $24.95 plus shipping. All right, y'all, I had to turn the AC on. It was getting too hot in here. Turner's got a little joke for you. What type of math do they use to design aircraft? What type of math do they use to design aircrafts? I don't know what. Plane geometry. <laughs> Thank you for the Commonwealth comedy book. Bye. I promised somebody I would mention something on here. It's something I hear often, but I don't normally talk about. And Hurricane, what is it? Hurricane Harmony he left a comment said that they've had to resubscribe to this channel and the Commonwealth Picker channel multiple times over the last month. I don't know what's going on. I hear that stuff all the time. But if you don't mind checking that and making sure you're subscribed if you already intended to, we'd appreciate that very much. And thank you all for the comments and the good words that we hear from you all the time. You guys are awesome to us. I hope things are going well for you as well. And Reagan, is, I'm not sure if Reagan's going to be on this video or not, but the family's going on vacation. I'm gone for a little while. We should be back by this point or really, really close to it. Matter of fact, I'm going to ship all this stuff out and I'm going to film another video because we had 38 things. It was a Monday when I filmed this part of it. So we're going to put it on two different videos this time. So we appreciate all the support you give us. And I can't wait to see you next time. <laughs>